everybody. It's I Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. It's nice and early in the morning. It's just after 5 a.m. Eastern where I live. And we still have potential tropical cyclone 6. We have winds at 50 miles an hour now. So once this circulation gets organized, this will undoubtedly become tropical storm Francine. This is slated to become a hurricane later this week and maybe could become a mid-grade hurricane as well. I've already noticed in the last couple of updates that we've had some changes to the track here. Whereas now we're starting to get more of Louisiana into the equation now. Whereas before it was expected to take a little bit more of a straight northward turn. It starts to turn now more so towards the northeast. So maybe western and central parts of Louisiana look like they get into the action here. So definitely need to be paying attention for over towards this area here. During the middle part of the week is when we would expect it to become a hurricane. Winds right now are forecasted to get all the way up to about 80 miles an hour here. We actually can go ahead and take a look at the spaghetti models here and get a look at what we're seeing. We're getting a little bit of variance here. There's even a couple of spaghetti models that push this all the way up to category two here. We'll have to see how this trends because this could really be uh, telling us to what's to come here. This is the most recent update on spaghetti model tracks here. And if you can watch the video yesterday you would realize that over here towards texas maybe towards the central coast of texas is where we were initially and since then we've made quite like i said we've made quite a jog off to the north and east here this may wobble back and forth for a while the storm itself really isn't moving all that much it's only moving at five miles an hour to the north northwest so with that in mind here, there's still plenty of time for this thing to strengthen, still plenty of time for this thing to wobble to the west, to the east, up to the north. Uh, we could be dealing with just about anything here at this point. <clears throat> now, one other thing to make note of here is, in comparison to the last model run, there's even a couple models that were kind of pushing this towards Cat 3. We'll have to see if that trend ends up continuing, but in this latest run here, they're not quite as dramatic in regards to the strengthening of this storm here so there's if there's any positive to have out of that this is it right here is that right now we're not seeing the realm of uh, category three within the realm of possibility here doesn't mean that we still can't be on our guard and of course as we know the gulf of mexico is very warm if you saw it in uh, the last tropical outlook or within the short that i did yesterday you already know we have 80 to 90 plus degree temperatures over here towards the entire Gulf of Mexico. So very concerned about this jog to the east here still. So we'll have to see what happens with that. As far as the environment itself, very prime for tropical development here. There is still some wind shear that this thing will battle for at least the next couple of days here. But as time goes on, this is only going to get a little, this is actually gonna get a little bit better in regards to wind shear right before landfall. We'll probably anticipate said landfall by maybe Thursday morning. I'm going to do my best to try to cover this live. The timing of the landfall is going to be really important in regards to that because most likely I'll end up being at work. But if we can, we're going to try to cover it live. In any case, though, Gulf of Mexico after this point still looks like it's pretty favorable and hospitable for additional tropical development in the Caribbean as well. So eyes front it's peak hurricane season september is finally starting to show it that being said we're going to go over to the relative humidities and mid levels is important to tropical development as well we're looking pretty good there might be a little bit of dryer that tries to sneak in from the east side of this system i don't think it's going to be impactful enough to really slow it down i think the wind shear would be the biggest inhibiting factor here but again with the waters as warm as they are over the gulf it's pretty much going to be the wild card in all of this. We could easily, excuse me, easily end up getting a category three storm while the models aren't showing it right now. So like I said, really the best thing to do is to stay tuned and keep an eye on the trends here. So with us now having an established tropical cyclone here, we can actually take a look at a couple of the hurricane models here. And you can, and like I said before, we can expect this thing to strengthen pretty notably over the next couple of days here and of course like i said before i would expect a landfall probably on thursday morning peak strength probably will be wednesday night we'll probably end up going live then 
we may do another update tonight because I do anticipate this to become Francine later this afternoon or maybe later this morning even at this point. Like I said, the environment's very favorable right now. So we'll go ahead and take a look at one other thing real quick here. We'll actually be able to get an idea of just what the wind speed could be based off of this model here. There's a bunch of models that I could look at as well, but obviously I'm short on time because so I got to go to work soon. But here is where we are currently looking at this storm. And here is where we really start to ramp up here. We get all the way up to about 70 knots. So this at this point, we're at a mid-grade hurricane here. It actually goes up to 81. So we could make it all the way up to maybe category two, maybe a mid-grade category two at that. But like I said, I do think this is still very much variable. Central pressure is anticipated at this point to be at about 980 millibars. So pretty strong hurricane at this point. Of course, as we get closer to land, we start to get that little bit of uh, interaction here. This storm eventually does start to weaken. And of course, after that point, we have to watch Louisiana and Mississippi for maybe tropical tornadoes, heavy downpours, and go on from that point. This eventually heads up, of course, into the Midwest. And then, of course, tears itself apart. But at that point, we still have to deal with those showers, storms, and of course, a lingering tornado threat possibly as well. So now that we've talked about PTC-6, let's go ahead and actually go ahead and take a look at the satellite here. And this is a little bit glitchy. I don't know what happened late last night, but yeah, that's been a thing on uh, any imagery that I've looked at had the uh, had this little bit of a glitchy effect there. But the reason I mentioned this is if you go back to this, there are two other areas that we're going to be watching. This has a 60% chance of developing within the next couple of days, 70% chance within the next seven days. And then this area right now, of course, 0% chance right now, but go to the seven day up to 60% on that. So if we go back to the satellite here, you can actually see these areas here. You can see this is Invest 92 here. It's kind of hard to tell with all the glitching going on. And then we have this other area of shower and storm activity that's likely to become Invest 93. So I'm going to be keeping extra close eyes on this. So the environments, as far as the environment's concerned here, uh, wind shear is a lot stronger. And this is going to help limit development, at least in the short term, I think. With this other one over here, Invest 92, I do think it has a better chance of developing. But the thing is, with this strengthening a bit, what's anticipated to happen here is this will probably get carried out to sea by those upper level winds. And the same thing will happen to what will likely become Invest 93. So not too concerned about these other two as much, but this is a tropical update, of course. So we're going to make sure we cover everything over here in the Atlantic. But the biggest inhibiting factor and this has been the uh this has been this this has been the uh, calling card of the year really has been the saharan dust this is the dust coming in from northern africa here and you can see that it's pretty much raining supreme like it's done pretty much throughout most of the year and it's really been choking out a lot of these systems here i do think that we're still going to see a few more name systems before the month is out this will by far be the most active month I would say we're like I would say at least at this point we would be likely to see two name storms. But if nothing else though, we're at least due to see Francine and unfortunately it looks like a US impact at this point. So this is the time to prepare if you're in Texas, Louisiana, and even parts further inland. Uh, Barrel had a pretty significant tornado threat when uh, she made landfall and it lasted for several days. We could see a similar situation occur once again so make sure we're hitting that like button and subscribe button to be updated here or at least keeping in keeping in touch with uh your local news weather agencies weather channel whatever you may but that, in any case though that's all i got for you guys i got to rush off to work Till next time it's been tired metalhead weatherman signing off <laughs>